Hi, my name is Lucky Word. As a Detroit native, I wanted to incorporate some of my favorite spots around Detroit into my capstone project. Right now, I'm standing at the James Scott Memorial Fountain on Belle Isle. Haven't been to Belle Isle? It's a must-see. Everyone has to visit here. Want to see what I learned during the ALS course? Feel free to keep on watching. As med students, we all know that staying fit is essential for our physical health. However, during the ALS course, I learned just how essential wellness is for your mental health and for facilitating academic success. In order to maintain both my physical and mental health as a medical student, I intend to continue doing one of my favorite exercises, spinning. I stopped by my local favorite studio and asked my instructor his tips on maintaining wellness. How can someone with a busy schedule stay fit and healthy? Uh, the best way to stay fit for a person that's very busy, first and foremost, is eating the right things. Eating the right things, that's the first thing and the most important thing is eating right stuff. Uh, people go and do exercises and take classes and they're still eating garbage, so they're kind of defeating the purpose. But eating healthy foods and not eating to get full, just eat just to satisfy your hunger for a second and then keep it moving. Most people that's busy, their the metabolism is high, you know, because they're always moving. They're always moving, so that's a good thing. But I, I suggest that you find some type of exercise program to get involved in. Some type of exercise program and at least twice a week. That's on the low end. What are some of the benefits of being active and fit? Well, as you can see, I, I own a cardio studio. And it's cardio shirt for cardiovascular. A lot of people don't even know they just think cardio. Cardio make you lose weight. No, cardio is short for cardiovascular. We strengthen your heart. Now you got other attributes to it. You're gonna lose weight. You know, you're gonna get uh, longer winded. You know, which is a good thing. Stamina. But the bottom line is to make your heart healthy. If your heart's healthy, you can come back from all kinds of illnesses and stuff like that. One lecture that really opened my eyes to the complexities of practicing medicine was the professionalism seminar. From this lecture, I was able to enhance my definition of professionalism. Here's a look at my definition. I was wondering if I could expand my definition of professionalism by asking some lifelong Detroiters what exactly does professionalism mean to them? What does professionalism mean to you? Hmm. I thought about this a little bit since you asked the question. My thinking is that professionalism is not only in what you say, but it's primarily in what you do. You have to, you have to, if you're saying you're, if you're saying you're going to be a professional, then you're going to be remarkable. There are things about you that have to be remarkable. Your, uh, a relationship with other people at your level or below your level, um, what you say and how you say it, how you treat other people. And it doesn't matter what career field you're in. You can be a young man or a young woman, 20, 22 years old, and be extremely professional because that's the way you do your business. So it's all about how you take care of your business and how you present yourself. That, determ that determines if you're, uh, the people that you talk to, if their perception of you is that you're a professional. So what does professionalism mean to you? Professionalism. When I was growing up, I had a, I had a lot of tutelage from my environment, and my environment consisted of people on the street, factory workers, barbers, grocers. And the first lesson they told me: when you're a professional, take pride in what you do. So professionalism, one, is taking pride in what you do for a living. Two, it also means being able to effectively and efficiently carry out the responsibilities as dictated by your job description. And pretty much, that's about it. Be good at what you do, be responsible and, count and accountable to those that, that are intricate in what you're doing 
and that are part and parcel to what you're doing, especially if it involves someone greater than yourself. Right now, I'm at one of my favorite study locations, the Detroit Public Library on Woodward Avenue. In listening to the presentations from the upperclassmen, I learned that all successful medical students have to assess their progress and their progression. Being a part of the ALS block has helped me to create a three-step plan of assessment. Here's how I plan on using what I learned to gauge my academic and personal progression as a medical student. The first step of my process is reflection. I want to ask myself, how do I feel about my performance? I also want to know, are there any changes that I should make to my own attitude or to my schedule to enhance my performance? My second step is utilizing scores and feedback. I want to use any test that I'm giving and any received feedback to gauge where exactly I am. And I also want to use that to, to determine if improvement is needed. Not only do I want to use the resources that the faculty give to us, but I want to use outside resources also. So my third step is planning. I want to know, how can I do better? In order for me to do better, I have to create a plan. So I want to compare where I am to clear and concise goals of where I wish to be. I want to do that by collaborating with my peers and other practicing medical professionals and even the school faculty to implement a plan and new strategies that I can utilize to improve myself. Overall, I feel like you can't get anywhere unless you create a plan and you know where you want to go. So those are some of the things that I learned during the ALS course. I feel as though ALS helped to prepare me for the rigors of medical school and really helped to ignite my excitement for this upcoming school year. Thanks for watching my video and best of luck to the class of 2023. Bye!